What's up YouTube? So in this video we are discussing a much requested subject and that being about timing. Yes, in reality the big difference between a really experienced plasterer and somebody just getting in the trade or, or perhaps a DIYer is understanding the timings when it comes uh, to each stage with regards to plastering. Now the reality is, and for the many of the professional plasterers that watch our channel, uh, they will know that the timing changes depending on what you are going on. So if you're going on plasterboard, it will be different to going on something like blue grit, to whether you're doing perhaps float and set, so going over hardwall, or maybe you've done some repair work and you're going over bonding the timings totally change. That said, what you're looking for is usually about the same. So today we are going to look at just the different stages of a plastering set and what you need to be looking for to make sure that you get your timings right. So we hope you enjoy the video. We hope you find it helpful. Consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing. So for the job that we are going to be plastering today, uh, for the most part, we are just going to be doing this lower section of this wall here. Now you can clearly see uh, that it is just plasterable, so it's a fairly, uh, fairly standard um, surface to be plastering over. Now we've mixed up three bags. We've got quite a few areas around the house that we're gonna be plastering. So we've actually mixed up the plaster semi-wet um, just because it's quite a lot of plaster to get through. So that's the first thing to think about when it comes to your timings, is think about what is the material that I am plastering over. So if it's high suction, you're gonna want the plaster to be a bit wetter. So when it comes to uh, plasterboard, it's not particularly uh, high suction, um, so you can mix up the plaster fairly average. Uh, but also take into consideration as well, if you are uh, mixing up an awful lot of plaster, then you want to give yourself a little bit more time. So uh, you would want it slightly on the wetter side. That's what the case is here. Three bags. It'll take us about 15 minutes to get rid of that plaster. Uh, so we've mixed it up just a fraction wetter. So what we're going to do is we're going to catch up when I have applied all of this plaster to the sections that we're working on today. Okay, so after you have put the first coat of plaster on, uh, which you can see here, we've just this section of wall here has just been uh, thrown on. Uh, what I'm then going to do is just run a uh, spatula over the top of it, speed skim, <coughs> whatever you might use. Um, we're just going to use the one that we normally use, which is the uh, Rafina plastic spatula thing, which I have no idea what it's called. Um, if you're using a uh, speed skimmer or a spatula, you can flatten it straight away. Uh, if you're not, you're going to want to leave it for a little bit of time just to pick up. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just flatten this section straight away. And then I'll just throw away the excess now. So another part of the timing process is when is a good time to keep on top of things like uh, the cleaning. Now you can see on the wall that we are putting on, I'll show you again in a second, you'll see that there are some bifold doors and also some windows uh, that we are plastering around. Now it's uh, very easy to get plaster on those windows. Now the temptation might be to leave that to the very end before you clean it off. However, if you wait till the plaster dries completely, it's very difficult to get that off. So as such, in my opinion, at around about the time that you start flattening, flattening in your first coat and your second coat, etc., it's, it's a good idea just to run a brush just along the window, just to take out some of those lumps of plaster that might have built up. And you can see, uh, say for instance, along here, uh, there is a bit of plaster in the reel. I'm, I'm not even gonna worry too much about the size of the brush at this point, I'll just run, the brush along there like that. So again, if we were to have a look at this uh, door frame here, you can clearly see uh, plaster around the uh, reveals is still wet, uh, which means also on the door, on the window frame it will be as well. So if we just run a brush along the window. Uh, don't worry about whether it scratches the plaster uh, or not at this stage, it doesn't matter. Uh, certainly before we apply the second coat, I'm gonna go over it again with the trowel just to flatten that in. What it does, it just takes out 
probably 95% of the plaster off the window frame straight away. It makes it a lot easier to keep it clean towards the end of the set. Okay, so after you have applied your first coat of plaster, if you used a spatula, you can flatten that in uh, straight away. If you're just using a trowel, that's no problem at all. Um, we mentioned already you want to just leave that for a bit to pick up. Now, the stage that I like uh, to flatten is if, I'm not sure how well you can see that, the plaster is still wet, still malleable if you drag your fingers in, but there's some, your fingers aren't completely sinking in to the plaster. So again, depending on, um, depending on the, uh, the background you're going over, uh, what you're looking for is using the trowel, uh, and it should be compressing the plaster, um, but it also should be taking out an awful lot of what we call trowel mines. So the, the trowel marks. Now, admittedly, if your trowel is brand new, uh, for instance, using the giveaway trowel, uh, it does tend to leave <coughs> more tram lines than a completely worn in trowel. However, um, allowing it just to pull in, you should be able to take out a lot of those marks. So, when it's firmed up a bit, it's still still wet, but your fingers aren't sinking sinking into the plaster, so they're actually going all the way through to the substrate. That'd be a good time just to do uh, a, a flatten with the plaster before you apply the second coat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over all the walls that we've put on, doing that flatten with this trowel. And what that's really doing is closing the plaster in, getting it ready for that second coat. Okay, so when it comes to doing the, uh, applying the second coat, uh, generally, um, what you're looking for is about the same regardless of what you are going over. Now, on board here, if I was to take the tripod, uh, and you would have a look. You can see here, hopefully it's coming up on the camera, that there's still moisture on the wall. It's still slimy, uh, but the wall has firmed uh, right up. Now, because we're going on uh, plasterboard, I'm not massively worried um, about pulling in too fast. However, if you were to go on something like bonding, you would want to start mixing up um, a little bit earlier than that, knowing that it is going to dry a bit faster. Same as if you are putting on a really large set, you're gonna to wanna to allow a little bit of extra time, so mix up a little bit earlier to allow for the fact you're putting on more plaster. This is a relatively small set, like I say, it's, it's three bags. So um, what we've done is we've, Louis just mixed up off camera and we're about to go on, but the key with your second coat is there needs to be moisture on the wall. Now the only time you would really let the plaster go off quite considerably if for whatever reason you had to apply the multi-finish exceptionally thick. Um, if it's really that thick, you should be using bond wall, bonding or hard wall like a backing plaster just to take out any deviations. But occasionally there are situations where you have to put it on really thick. If that does happen, you have to let the plaster pull right in. Otherwise, um, what happens is it looks a little bit like cellulite when you get a uh, raking light down. It looks really wobbly where the plaster is really thick. So you have to let that first coat pull right in. But for generic plastering like this here, you want the surface to be slimy. You don't want it to have skinned over where it's gone dry. If that happens, uh, what happens is the uh, two coats, they're separate, they're not bonding together. So having that moisture on the surface, it ties the two coats together. Now, this form of plastering is on the understanding that you're putting two proper coats on. So for instance, you might apply the first coat at two millimeters and then the second at one millimeter. So generally your uh, first coat is twice the thickness as the second coat. There are some that uh, mix up maybe a third of the plaster used on the first coat mix it up almost like water and basically apply it like filler. Um, that's generally not how we plaster. So the timings that we're referring to are on the assumption you're applying two proper, or at least two decent coats, which is what we're doing here. So that's the timing you're looking for. Uh, 
slightly shiny surface, it's slimy to touch, but your fingers are not digging in. That's about the right time to apply the second coat. So we're gonna do that now. Okay, so this has had its second coat of plaster. So what we will now do, as mentioned already, same as the first coat, because we're using uh, spatulas or speed skims, we're gonna flatten this straight away. If you were just using a trowel, you would wanna leave this a bit just to pull in. Uh, but you can see um, we've applied it relatively generously, which is why there's quite a few trowel marks. So we're just gonna use the spatula just to straighten out the walls a bit. So the plaster is pretty wet. Still, that's no problem. You can see here uh, on the spatula how wet that is. Um, because it's so wide, uh, it's no big deal uh, using it just to take off um, all the excess very quickly. In the light, there's quite a few trowel marks here. Just This is why these speed skims are so good. It just takes out most of them really quickly. As if you were to use a trowel at this stage, when it's this wet, um, you wouldn't really be gaining an awful lot. You can see there within, what, literally 30 to 40 seconds, um, that's flattened off, um, just taking out most of those uh, trowel marks straight away. Let's have a look. Certainly uh, good enough for what we need um, this early on. And you can see it gets quite, an awful, quite a lot of plaster coming off. So what we're then gonna do is we're gonna leave that for however many minutes it is um, until the top surface just goes a little bit slimy, uh, picks up a bit, kind of almost um, around about the stage you'd, uh, you were at when you applied the second coat. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over it with the trowel just to really close that plaster in. And what we'll do is we'll pick up when we're at that, if that, when we're at that stage. Okay, so the next uh, timing stage that you really need to pay attention to after you've applied your first coat, given it a, a flatten, second coat, you've given it a flatten, is that you now need to close the plaster in. This is really the final stage before you start applying a wet trowel. Um, if you get this stage right, the rest of the stages are very easy. Now what you're looking to uh, find is that you want uh, there's still to be some moisture on the wall. Um, it doesn't want to be so dry. Uh, the wall doesn't want to be so dry where uh, you need to add water to get the plaster to, to move. At the same time, um, if it's still leaving loads of tram lines or perhaps it's leaving tide marks, things like that, that is a good sign it's a bit too wet. Um, but what I like to do at this point is just brush out your corners, um, maybe run the trowel in the corner like that just to dig the rubbish out of it. And then just use the toe just to close it back in. And, and possibly just go around all of your corners, um, cleaning out all the edges, wiping off the beads, <coughs> making sure your windows are clean, etc. so forth. And you're really looking to apply uh, quite heavy pressure, relatively flat, just to really uh, close uh, that plaster in without using any water. This really is the final stage, um, running a trowel across, um, where you won't use water. So really push that plaster in. What this does is it enables you to get a really nice wet trowel. Now, this is also the stage, we had somebody uh, ask us on social media a while ago on our Instagram account um, about uh, when we fill in misses, um, do we use the fat? Um, <coughs> generally, we do not. Now, don't get me wrong, if you get a bit of um, excess plaster coming off the wall, We'll wipe that on the bucket and we'll leave it on the bucket to, if we happen to, to miss one. Um, but generally, you shouldn't really need to be filling in holes at the point of the wet trowel. Because if you're doing that, what you're actually gonna find is the fat you're using is actually a paler color. 
It doesn't look very good. It doesn't look particularly professional. And in reality, as long as you're plastering within your limits, there's no reason why you need to use that fat excessively. This is actually the stage that we do our final check, going around just making sure that we've picked up all of the misses. If I take you, uh, if I take you off the tripod, hello. So if you were to have a look here, you can see still getting a bit of movement, really closing that in. Just you can see the this is a little bit of loose plaster, and that this is the stage. See, no water is needed. What you might find is the edges are a little bit dry. So just, they might need a little bit of a brush up, but this is the point. This is the point where we're picking up all those little holes you can see up here. There's just some holes in the ceiling line. Just use that to fill that in. You can see. Just use this opportunity now. You can see perhaps under this socket here. Just fill those in. Nice long strokes, pushing nice and hard. Possibly see in the light, just really closing that wall in. Taking out all those mists, as you can see here, it's just a very light mess. Use a bit of gear off the trowel and just fill that in. See, no water's needed. But it's really, if I was to, let's put the trowel down. If I was actually to put my hand on the wall, it's not really, although there's plenty of moisture on my hand, uh, it's, it's not so wet, the plaster's not so wet that it's actually, that it's sticking to my hand. So that's what you're looking for, where um, it's picked in and put a lot. There's um, a little bit of movement on that surface. And all we wanna do is just go over with your trowel, fairly shallow angle, lots of pressure, close that plaster in. What that will do is to give a much nicer wet trowel. It means that when you're wet troweling, you're not gonna be taking off anywhere near as much product. And it'll also enable you to leave it a lot longer before you do that wet trowel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over all of my walls, um, applying this technique, and we'll catch up at the point where we're doing that wet trowel. Okay, so when it comes to the next stage of a plastering set is possibly one of the stages that most people uh, get wrong, or certainly for those that are inexperienced, and that is when to do the first wet trowel. Now we have featured this before on the channel, and for us there is a very easy technique to help you work out is this the right time or not? Now this is obviously working on the assumption that you flattened it, uh, your walls properly, that you've compressed the plaster like we have uh, shown already in this video. Now, that simple technique to use. You can see here we've got our wall. So you can see here we've got our wall. Now, as we've mentioned before on other videos, we nearly always apply the wall sir with a brush. There are several reasons for it. One, um, it makes it a little bit easier to direct the water where we want it, uh, but also uh, it's a little bit cleaner in our opinion. Um, but thirdly, it helps you work out when is the right time uh, to do a wet trowel. And the technique is the following. With a wet brush, what you wanna do is just apply the water on the wall. Now, if the brush doesn't... I do apologize for the noise. I do apologize for the noise. Uh, builders have just turned up, unfortunately. If it doesn't scratch the plaster, so if it doesn't scratch the plaster with the brush, that means you're good to go. <coughs> what that means is that the wall has firmed up enough that you won't be taking out off exuberant amounts of plaster when you're doing the wet trail. So, brush where you want to go. Nice firm pressure. Like so. Have a 
look at the wall now, hopefully you can see in the light where I've been. Who knew it was Armageddon in the building site that I'm at right now? Now, as mentioned already, you can see uh, that we're getting a little bit of plaster off that's normal. We're going to get rid of that wipe on the bucket. Now, what you shouldn't be getting is things like tiger marks. And it quite literally looks like the stripes of a tiger down the wall. Now, if you've compressed your plaster properly, like as in the trowel before, that is by far and away the easiest way to remove uh, tiger marks or prevent tiger marks if you're not sponge floating. If you apply the water down the wall, you see it's a nice even colour. You can see it's a nice even colour. No striking on the wall at all. So, because we've done that closing in with the blaster, we flattened it and then we closed it in with the trowel and then we've left it for a really long time, so then it pulled right in and using the wet brush technique, making sure it's not scratching, we're able to get this really nice finish um, very early on. All this will require now pretty much is we'll see if we can get away with not doing another wet trowel but if, if we do it'll be one more wet trowel and then a, a plastic over the top. That's, that's a very effective, very quick way of getting a really high standard very early on. So what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to go through the, uh, the rest of the walls um, applying that wet trowel and then we'll come back to it when it comes to doing that second wet trowel. Okay, so uh, these walls now have had a first wet trowel. I just wanted to show you, so this is the sort of finish that we are getting. You can see there's no, there's no fat marks, hopefully it's coming out, there's not really, there's no tiger marks anywhere, it's all a uniform colour. Hopefully that's coming out in the video. This all come out <clears throat> very nice in the, the, the walls we're doing in the hallway and <coughs> in the utility, they're all about the same. Better. So what's the reason for me showing you that at this point? Well, in our experience and what we've seen, the, the, the mistake that so many people who are inexperienced make, and, and in, in a way, I've seen experienced plasterers make the same mistake, is when they are doing the wet trowel too soon. Um, whenever you see stripes on the wall, especially ones where they're stripy, and then as it's drying, it's drying a different color where they filled it in with fat. Uh, they are called tiger marks, and really, that happens when the wet trowel has been done at the wrong time. Now, there is a combination of closing in the plaster after you flattened it. So it, there's just another pass that you do over closing it in um, just before you do the wet trowel. Um, then you leave it for quite some time. Um, when it's skinned over, we mentioned about that trick, using a wet brush, brushing the plaster. If it's not scratching, that's about the right time. Obviously, <coughs> obviously, if you left it for two hours, it wouldn't scratch either, and obviously the wall would have gone off. So you have to be on it. You're not talking about sitting around for hours and hours on end. You know, you probably, depending on the surface you're going over, you're only talking 10 or 15 minutes. But if you're applying water with a brush and it's not leaving scratch marks, that means that there isn't a huge amount of surface moisture on the wall. Therefore, when you add water to it, it's not going to be scraping off too much. If you're getting loads and loads of fat coming off, it's a good sign it's too wet. But if you've got those two stages at the right time, literally I probably could leave this now and the painters would probably be thrilled with it because it would give that slightly 
um, rough texture to it. As it dries, it tends to just roughen up a little bit. Painters love that. Um, you know, there's no filling to do because we did it on that trowel where we closed everything in. Uh, we showed it earlier. There's no filling, there's no fat marks anywhere. All the hard work has been done. All I'm gonna do now um, in a moment is I'm gonna do one more wet trowel, which will be a cross trowel. We've discussed this before. And then I will just uh, do a final dry pass with a plastic and then that will be it. Uh, and in reality, it's, it's a perfect finish. You know, there are no tiger marks. It's all coming in in a nice, even color. Wow. Okay, so the next stage is the second wet trowel. Now, full transparency, these walls are pretty darn good as it is anyway. I'm really only doing this trowel just so you can see the stage uh, that it needs to be done at. But there's a very simple technique that you can use to work out when to do the second wet trowel. Now, this one isn't as important as the first wet trowel because if you've done the first wet trowel right, the walls should be pretty much on the money. But the technique is as follows. If you go to the wall and if you, if you put your hand on the wall, leave it on there for a while if you want, take your hand away and then look at the line down the wall sideways. If there's no imprint whatsoever that your hand has been there, that means that there isn't any surface water left on the wall, that it's skinned over it, that it's nice and dry. That's about the right time um, for your second wet trowel. Now what would happen is if there was moisture on the wall, as you put your hand on the wall and leave it there for a bit, your hand would actually take some of the moisture out of the wall and it would actually leave a very faint imprint of your hand. So if there's any sign whatsoever, even if it's just a little bit, that your hand has been on the wall, it's too early for a second wet trowel. But for us, we don't have that. so. As we've mentioned already for us, this is the stage that we like to do our cross trowel. <laughs> That's the very long wall, so... Um, I'll probably do it in smaller sections. Getting fat. So all that's coming off here really is just dirty water. If you're getting loads of fat coming off your trowel, uh, that usually means it's too wet. Uh, but then all you want to do is just have a look just to make sure there's no low spots uh, on the wall. Directly you want to clean the trowel up. Okay, so um, what you then want to have a look at when you're doing your wet trowel is if you just shine it down the wall, you can see I haven't done the come to about here, but if you shine it down the wall, have a look. If you have any wet, if you have any wet marks on the wall as you've come across with your trowel, usually that means uh, that that's a bit of a low spot on the wall. If that is a case, you might just need to have a look at as to whether you need to uh, flatten the plaster in uh, a little bit more, uh, possibly go over it again um, with the wet trowel. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna carry on going over the wall uh, on both sides, and then we will catch up for our final dry track. Okay, so the final stage is that of a dry pass. Now for many, uh, they don't think particularly a dry pass is necessary. Uh, the reason we do it is because if there is any leftover water from the second wet trowel, uh, this is when you get rid of it. Uh, so, um, as we've mentioned a million times before, we like to use a plastic trowel. There are several reasons for it. Namely, I think it gives a beautiful finish. Um, uh, it tends to you also be able to finish a little bit faster as well, so you can hit the wall a little bit sooner. Um, but as a general rule, 10 to 20 minutes after you've done your second wet trowel, you should be good for a dry pass, to be honest with you. Um, any time is fine, to be totally honest with you. Um, but it's just a case of um, 
you start on this section wall here, usually I like to go the opposite direction that I did the uh, wet trowel in. So I'll be up and down. And you just use it to take off any surface water that might be there. And this really just gives that nice, crisp, smooth finish that when the homeowner comes and touches the wall, it feels really nice and slick. Uh, you could use a steel trowel, you could use a flexible. Um, our preference is just to use a plastic. Not looking to overshine the wall. Let me have a look at the wall now. Just giving it a quick pass. Just gives a wonderful finish. So what I will now do is I will just go over, I'll just go over the remainder of the walls with the plastic, finishing up. But in reality, that is it. As you mentioned right at the start of the video, generally an experienced plaster to an inexperienced one or a DIYer, the only difference is understanding really the timing, yes, how much you put on, etc. so forth, how flat you get it. But most of the time the mistakes are made when you don't understand the timing. So although the timings may be different, possibly on a cold day, it may take 30 or 40 minutes for the plaster to dry enough for you to put a second set on or to do a wet, to um, do a second coat or do a, a wet trowel. Whereas on a hot sunny day, it might be much, much quicker. But what you're looking for in the plaster is usually the same thing. So if you follow uh, certainly the steps that we use to get a nice finish, and you can see it's come out lovely. Um, if you follow those steps, you won't go too far wrong. Well, we hope uh, this video has been helpful, possibly for some that are struggling to work out the timings so that you too can churn out a decent finish. We thank you so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoy the content. Consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks again.